It's Monday, October 8th. It's been billed as the semi-final before the 2019 final. Assembly elections in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Telangana and Mizoram will be held simultaneously between November 12th and December 7th. The counting of votes will take place on December 11th. The BJP has been in power in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh since 2003 and is the incumbent in Rajasthan. The Congress is in power in Mizoram and the TRS in Telangana. The results of these elections will be seen as a straw in the wind. An indicator, particularly in the Hindi belt, which has contributed majorly to the BJP showing in the 2014 general election. Meanwhile, in a setback to the Congress, after the BSP, the Samajwadi Party has also ruled out any alliance with the party for this round of assembly elections, lamenting that the Congress has made us wait for too long SP Chief Akhilesh Yadav has said his party will look to tie up with Mayavati's BSP. It was exactly a year ago this week that the New York Times and New Yorker published investigative reports that detailed decades of allegations of sexual assault, rape and harassment against powerful Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. The hashtag MeToo movement that began in its wake led to women world over who have largely been denied access to institutional redress, taking to social media, sharing their ordeal. Here in India, starting Friday, we saw a series of allegations of harassment, assault and sexual misconduct made against men in powerful positions, from a celebrated filmmaker to popular comedians, noted author and former top editors. The flood of revelations this weekend followed actor Tanushri Datta's renewed accusation that her then co-star Nana Patekar sexually harassed her in 2008, a charge that Bollywood refused to pay heed to when she spoke up 10 years ago. A similar list of members from the academia was made public in 2017. Among the key questions being asked in the debate that has ensued is the role of organizations and internal complaints committee to deal with sexual harassment at the workplace. So how and when was sexual harassment at workplaces recognized by the law? Feminist historian V. Gita explains, ever since women had to stake claims to dignity and equality wherever they are, they are seen as fair sexual game just because they are there in a public context and in unequal relationships with whom they work for. So, in a sense, movements that were fought for the freedom and equality and dignity of workers have had to address sexual harassment, only it wasn't named as such in a long time. Movements that have mobilized agricultural workers have had to deal with the fact that women were literally picked off the workplace and carried away by the landlords or by zamindars, and the women worker's body was seen as something that she had to hand over to her master. The 1980s movie Mitch Masala, starring Smita Patil and Nasiruddin Shah, encapsulates this powerfully. But it was the Bhavri Devi gang rape case of 1992 that set in motion a series of events leading to the enactment of India's sexual harassment law. Bhavri Devi was a Sathin, a village-level development worker with the Rajasthan government. Her job included raising consciousness in her village about child marriage, dowry, etc. As part of the undertaking, Bhavri Devi had to address the community in public places and sometimes inside their homes. Bhavri Devi's efforts with respect to child marriage in her village were backed by police action. This was resented by many people, particularly men of the dominant caste, and she was brutally gang-raped in public. In what came as a shock, the trial court cleared her attackers of rape charges. Her appeal in the High Court over two decades later is still to be heard. Meanwhile, Nena Kapoor, a Delhi-based lawyer who was present during the trial, spoke to other Sathins. She also discovered that months before Bhavri Devi was gang-raped, she had complained to local authorities about being harassed and that her employer, the government, did nothing to protect her. That finding resulted in five women's groups, including the NGO Vishakha, file a petition in the Supreme Court. 
the landmark judgment in this case laid down the Vishakha guidelines recognizing sexual harassment in the workplace and mandating, among other things, that every public and private enterprise set up a complaints committee. This became the basis for the Sexual Harassment of Women at the Workplace Act 2013. But the revelations made by women over this weekend speak to the failure of these committees at workplaces in creating a climate that made it easier for women to share their experiences without fear of reprisals or continued hostility and intimidation, given that more often than not, the balance of power is skewed in favour of the perpetrator. Meng Hongwei isn't just anybody. He's chief of Interpol, the international police body that connects law enforcement agencies of 192 member countries. And he's been missing for over a week, disappeared without a trace after he returned to his home country, China, last week. Hong Wei was taken away for questioning by discipline authorities as soon as he landed in China last week, the South China Morning Post reported on Sunday, quoting a source. 64-year-old Hong Wei has served as China's Deputy Minister of Public Security, a position under which he controlled the country's secret police. His election to Interpol in 2016 was celebrated by Beijing, who saw the promotion as lending respectability to China's notoriously opaque and arbitrary criminal justice system. In April, however, the ministry disclosed that Meng was no longer a member of the Communist Party committee, a step that sparked speculation overseas that he could be in trouble. Speaking to the New York Times, Deng Yuwing, a former editor of a Communist Party journal, said, if Meng Hongwei has disappeared in China, the most likely reason is an anti-corruption investigation. Internationally, he's president of Interpol, but in the eyes of the Chinese authorities, he is first of all Chinese. A brainchild of Xi Jinping, the anti-corruption investigation agency has wide powers to detain officials under investigation for graft and was established by Beijing earlier this year. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2018 to Dennis McVeigh and Nadia Murad for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict. 63-year-old Congolese gynecologist Dennis Mukwege runs a hospital and legal service for rape survivors. Sexual violence is systematically used as a tactic of terror and intimidation in the recurrent civil conflict within the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has been dubbed the rape capital of the world by the United Nations. Mukwege has rescued and helped over 50,000 women. A vocal critic of the government, he has sustained several attacks and lives under the permanent protection of UN peacekeepers. 25-year-old Iraqi activist Nadia Murad was abducted by the ISIS in 2014 alongside other women. She lost six brothers and her mother as the extremist group killed anyone considered too old to be trafficked or sexually exploited. After three months as a sex slave at the hands of Islamic State militants, she managed to escape and has been campaigning for the Yazidi people and against human sex trafficking since. She is the first Iraqi and second youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner after Malala Yousafzai, who was 17 when she won in 2014. And finally, the art world just got bank seed. Buyers at an auction at Sotheby's in London were in for the surprise of their life when Banksy's girl with balloon that closed for over a million euro began to self-destruct. Apparently, Banksy had installed a shredder into the painting's frame. Crazy, right? See you tomorrow.